Thank you, Andrew. I'll now handle, uh, hand over to Daniel Pantanay, who is going to take us through uh, where we're at with the, the DFS and, importantly, some of the some of the insights we're gaining off the back of the pilot plant and how we're reacting to that. So, Daniel. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. <coughs> As John said, this afternoon, I'm going to provide an overview of the uh, Mahengi graphite concentrator as a result of the test work on the pilot plant that we've done so far. And also I'm going to point out some of the differences of the Mahengi flow sheet to some other operations. Just a bit of background, uh, uh, CPC, who I work for, is currently doing the definitive feasibility study. Uh, we were also the engineering and uh, consultant for Balama. Uh, and in fact, uh, I actually have worked on Balama for two years. Uh, initially do as, as project manager for the EPC services, EP services, and uh, then actually was seconded across the CIRA, and I was on site a year as deputy project manager working within the CIRA team, and I also had a team of engineers over there. The reason why I mention that is because we learned a lot off CIRA, off Balama, and we've been able to apply that, some of that, to Mahengi. Mahengi is a one million tonne per annum process plant. The benefit of that size is it means that we can look at modular equipment, we can look at uh, fabricating modules off site, shipping them to site and pre assembly. What we're trying to do there is just minimise our uh, site work and also any risks of rework and things like that. Not all graphite flow sheets are the same. Mahengi is a hard rock deposit, and here I've listed out the main stages of the Mahengi flow sheet. We've got a three-stage crushing circuit, we've got primary milling, we've then got a rougher and scavenger flotation circuit, followed by a cleaner flotation, and then we dewater and dry that concentrate, and then we screen it, bag it, and store it. Another type of flow sheet is one that's suited to a, a saprolite deposit, where the ore is soft, and it's much easier to crush. This is a typical one here from another project. Uh, the main differences are a single stage crushing. We have a scrubbing circuit to try and wash out those clays that are present in a saprolite uh, ore. And also a split between the flake and the fine circuit. And the reason for that is to try and apply differing amounts of polishing to the flake and the fines, in particular the flake circuit, where we don't want to over polish the uh, flake and as a result, break it down. We want to maintain that flake size. This is the crushing and milling flow sheet for Mahengi. The aim for crushing and milling is to target recovery while minimizing graphite degradation. As I said, the Mahengi ore is competent and requires three-stage crushing, which we'll achieve with jaw crushing, followed by two cone crushers. Mahengi being a hard rock is easy to handle. It's not wet or sticky. We use a crushed ore bin to create surge between crushing and milling. And we're also going to use a rod mill as the primary mill. The reason for that is a mod of selecting a rod mill is it minimizes the fines uh, generation. On Mahengi, we're actually going to target a grind size with a P80 of 634 microns. This is to make sure that we don't break down those larger flakes that we're seeing in the ore. And also, you'll see there's no scrubber there because we don't have those clays to wash out. Rougher flotation is the first stage a flotation which produces a concentrate. The objective here is to recover the maximum amount of graphite at as coarse a particle size as practical. At the rougher floats, there's less emphasis on quality of the concentrate produced. Complete liberation of the graphite is not required for rougher flotation, only sufficient liberation to release enough of the gang material to get high recovery. 
Scavenger flotation is applied to the rougher floats, ta rougher tailings. The objective is to recover any of the graphite that was not recovered during the initial roughing stage. This is achieved by the secondary grinding mill to produce further liberation. For the secondary mill, we're targeting a P80 grinding target of 270 microns. The concentrate from the rougher scavengers is sent to the cleaner cells. At this point, the graphite recovery is at 96.5%. Approximately 3.5% of the graphite is lost to scavenger tails. The cleaner flotation phase is where we produce our final concentrate. The objective of the cleaning is to produce as high grade concentrate as possible without degrading those graphite flakes. This is achieved with stages of polishing to get more complete liberation of the graphite. The challenge with the polishing is that it can start breaking down those graphite flakes. The intent is also to use as few cleaner stages as possible in order to reduce capital and operating costs. At Mahengi, during the test work, we tested a, both a single and a split circuit configuration like we saw earlier on the saprolite circuit. What we found when we tested the concentrate that was produ produced from those two circuits is that there was very little difference in the particle size distribution of the concentrate. This confirmed that the, mechanical, the Mahengi flake is actually quite mechanically robust. And it doesn't break down under more intense polishing. So therefore, for the DFS, we've adopted a single circuit approach. And of course, this would save costs as well. From the pest test work and pilot plant results, we found that Mahengi can achieve the following total graphitic content grades. So after a pol one polishing stage, followed by three cleaner stages, we're able to produce a 95% TGC graphite. If we then apply another polishing stage, followed by another cleaner, we can get to 97.5. And then finally, if we do another polish, followed by two cleaner stages, we can actually get it to 99%. It's important to note here that this is a closed circuit. So we're only losing tails at the top where, we where the primary cleaner is. At this point, we're going to lose 1% to tails. But in upgrading to the 97.5 and the 99% grades, we're not losing graphite to tails. The risk is, however, that by applying these additional polishing stages, you can start breaking down those valuable flakes. For the DFS, we're going to design a plant that gets it to 97.5. We're going to leave space to build the final, uh, the extra uh, polishing and cleaning stages. Whether that goes in in the initial stages of the project or later, that'll come from uh, feedback from marketing. Also, we'll build in flexibility. If we only need to produce a 95% grade, we'll have the ability to bypass the extra stages and just produce the 95. This is actually a video taken from Pilot Plant 1 of the primary cleaner 3 concentrate. What you see there is a concentrate being produced at 95% TGC. Once we've produced our concentrate, the objective of drying and bagging is to clean, is to dry, screen, and produce a final well, and take our final concentrate into each of the five product sizes. This is achieved using a thickener, filters, and diesel fire dryers. The different moisture contents we're producing in getting to this final dry product actually creates quite a challenge in terms of materials handling. And we actually employ, we're looking at different ways of actually handling this. We could use beam pumping, chain conveyors, pneumatic conveying, and screw feeders. These all have quite a big impact on layout, and we're actually investigating a few other forms as well. We use dry screens to screen to each of the five products. And it's important to note that on Mahengi, 
approximately 65% of, uh, the pro of the product is actually in the flake size fraction. The reason why I mention that is because screening of uh, larger particles is much more efficient than fines. So we expect the screens to be a lot smaller than what we would expect for a fines operation. Once it's dried and screened, it's put into one ton bags and stored ready for shipment. The mill residue or tails disposal is an area that was revisited early in the, in the early stages of the DFS. The Mahengi terrain is very hilly. We've got several uh, seasonal waterways going through the site and it attracts 1.87 metres of rainfall per year, mainly in the months from December to April. The PFS was based on a wet tails design that had eight separate storage facilities with up to four of those facilities being operated at any one time. This in turn created large water catchment areas and made the overall site water management very complex. We actually completed an options study and a risk assessment comparing conventional wet towels to using a dry stack. Dry towel stacking is where we dewater the tailings using thickening and filtration to produce a tailings with a moisture content of approximately 20%, which can then be uh, either trucked or conveyed to an area for stacking. A dry stack doesn't require large re retention embankments. We only need to put buns in just to collect the runoff. We've actually been able to se select a single site for the dry stack option because it's self-supporting, so we don't have all these other sites to uh, worry about. So the study is pr proceeding based on a dry stack approach. Some of the other benefits is our water, wa raw water consumption is significantly reduced. We don't have all these multiple water facilities to manage. Uh, the benefit of running, catching the runoff from the stack and using it in the process plant. And also we don't have these large embankments to construct and monitor throughout the life of the mine. During the DFS, we're always looking for ways to reduce the project risk. On Mahengi, a lot of time and money is being invested in test work and pilot plants to reduce the risk. This work we're doing at the moment, on uh, the, especially the pilot plant, is being done much earlier than we've typically seen on other projects, where we've seen the vendor test work not being completed until the detailed design phase, and also pilot plant results not being available until the end of the DFS or in the early stages of an implementation phase. Having all this vendor test work information and this pilot plant information uh, means that the number of engineering, uh, the amount of assumptions that we're having to make in engineering is significantly reduced. Uh, the metallurgical test work is completed at SGS and those results were used to develop the flow sheet for the pilot plant one. When we ran the pilot plant one, those results then confirmed the metallurgical test work results. We also produced eight tons of product which is being used for marketing uh, but also we're currently putting together samples and sending off to major equipment uh, suppliers to test the major equipment such as dryers, dry screens, thickness filters. As I said, it means that the amount of assumptions we're having to make during the DFS are significantly reduced because we had the hard data for the actual project. And having, those, having to make those assumptions means the risk for rework down the track in the later phases is significantly reduced. Pilot Plant 2 is planned for August 18. During that, as well as producing a lot more product for marketing, we'll also use it to confirm the optimised flow sheet that we've developed, and also we'll do further variability test work to stress test the flow sheet and make sure there's no problems. And just to wrap things up, we're currently full steam ahead in the feasibility study. 
We've assembled an experienced graphite team, many of whom have actually come across from the Ballamac project, and we've commenced the engineering. We've started issuing budget cost inquiries to the market, and we're getting some good feedback. And we're targeting to finish the DFS at the end of quarter three, 2018. Thank you.